Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. We are doing a Rien Angel of Rebirth one more time. I'm calling this deck. My son is here. If you're wondering why Kirby's are flooding behind me, it's because, uh, yeah, he's got three Kirby's and he's made little hats for them, so he wants to show them off. Anyway, Rien Angel of Rebirth is a uh, Naya Commander. Naya Business. I know I said it. There, I'm done. Okay. And uh, so she's two uh, red, green, white. She's an angel, 5-4 flyer. So that's not terrible. For five mana, you'd expect at least that much. But anyway, other multicolored creatures you control get plus one, plus zero. So that's a nice little bonus there. And whenever another multicolored creature you control dies, return it to its owner's hand to begin your next end step. That's the big one there, right? That's the real, like money ability that's what this deck is all about so th this uh commander is all about multicolored type all right having multicolored creatures is uh mechanically more of a pain in the butt because they are more complicated to ca cast right you need to do to do a lot more worried about worrying about mana fixing and things like that he also has a kirby lunchbox anyway so yeah it, mechanically it's a bit more of a hassle Doing multicolored, but this is a lot of benefit here. Okay, so she does have an anthem effect, which is a nice little bonus, but we're not here for the anthem effect, right? Yeah. Anytime a multicolored creature dies, you return it to his hand at the beginning of the next end step, including sacrifice. But the thing you need to worry about is that it has to actually die. That means it has to be on the battlefield, it has to die. That's okay if you sacrifice. But if it's going to another zone, if it's getting like exiled or even getting returned to your library or something like that, this does not help with that, right? So if they're going to get taken out, you got to make sure they die and get removed that way. Doctor, doctor, doctor. Okay, me somebody. I'm the doctor. Okay, I'm going to try and get him away. Don't worry. Um, Theme, multicolored typo is the main theme. Sub-themes are sacrifice, plus one, plus one, counters, anthem, cancel counter spells. Counter spells are a hassle because that stops them from entering the battlefield, so they won't actually be able to trigger her ability unless they actually die. Them not entering the battlefield is a big problem. Um, and legendary creatures is our final theme, so yeah. The deck price is $37.70 at the moment, and this is the TCG market value. Um, the, again, the, the TCG apparently does have a very high shipping cost, so you might want to look at other options if you want to buy this deck or just build it yourself. Um, that works too. But yeah, the deck, is, the deck list is available on moxfield.com, so you'll have all kinds of buying options there. Okay, part one, Rian, Angel of Rebirth, about the commander. My son is now distracted. My wife got home, so yeah, she got our son uh, in the office, and he's hopefully distracted for a little bit here, anyway. <clears throat> okay, so there are two issues that might arise with your recasting of creatures. Um, one, they need to be on the battlefield first. Counter creatures don't count, right? If they get countered, that just goes to the graveyard. That does not activate her ability. Two, they need to die, not go to exile or to another zone. So really having something that allows you to just sacrifice them is very key. And we do have something that does that in this deck. So that's great. Okay, high synergy cards, Dragon Arch. This is five mana. It may sound like a lot, but it's going to save you mana in the long run. For a two mana, tap it. You may put a multicolored creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. Most of the multicolored creatures cost two or more, right? You're going to be able to pretty easily find something that costs quite a bit more, probably like four or five even, and be able to just throw that onto the battlefield without paying its casting cost. Um, this is just an amazing card, and it gets it into the battlefield. That's the main thing, getting it into the battlefield basically with cost reduction as well. Um, just an absolutely awesome card in this deck. 
Evolutionary leap for one greenness and enchantment for one green. Sacrifice a creature. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in random order. Buh, buh, buh. Um, so basically, you're going to like... I, I almost wanted to say cascade, but it's not cascade because it doesn't count. cast it. You're going to just go through your deck from starting with the uh, top until you hit a creature and just throw that creature into your hand. The real advantage here is that you can sacrifice a creature for one green anytime you want. So if someone's about to exile one of your creatures and you don't want it gone, easy. You just sacrifice it and then you go, okay, now it's gone to the graveyard. I'm going to get another cre creature card into hand. And at the end of the turn, you're just going to put that card that you sacrificed right back into your hand anyway. Um, just all kinds of kind of mean shenanigans you can do with that. Elf Hex Hunter. Okay, this is amazing because it is one or green, right? You can choose which one you pay for a 1 1. And once again, one or green and tap it. Sacrifice him to destroy target enchantment. So basically, you can cast him. The next turn, you get to pay one mana, tap him, destroy an enchantment, throw him into the graveyard. At the end of the turn, he goes straight back to your hand. Next turn, you can play him again and then just keep going, going, going. Um, we're also going to have ways for him to gain haste when he enters. So, uh, yeah, if he, if you have Riot, right? If you have Riot, that just means you're going to, oh, right away, okay, haste, and then, hey, great. You uh, can sacrifice him right away, put him into the graveyard, back to your hand. Just do that every turn, two mana. Pretty much every turn, you're going to have a remo enchantment removal spell. Um, really kind of mean in this deck. General Ferris Rockrick. Rockerick? Anyway, one, uh, a red and a white for a 3 1. Hexproof from monocolored. Whenever you cast a multicolored spell, create a 4 4 red and white golem or artifact creature token. 4 4 tokens are not messing around, first of all. Um, one ones are little chumps. 4 4s are like, oh, okay. They mean business. Also, we're going to have all kinds of anthems and like ways to give them plus one, plus one counters that are just going to like potentially make them into monsters. Um, and this is every time you're casting a multicolored spell. Um, the hex proof of multicolored can be nice as well. Again, some decks that's going to just be like uh, the general can't be blocked, and because uh. This is not a tap ability, this is just an automatic. If the, you know, if a uh, rock rick, I don't know what to call it, the general is uh, tapped or untapped, it doesn't matter. The ability works either way, right? So you kind of don't care if he's tapped or untapped. You want him to stay on the battlefield when you're casting. Even summoning sick doesn't matter, right? You just want that trigger right there, the cast trigger. Balefire Liege, okay, two and red or white, red or white, red or white, so five CMC, getting more expensive, but other red creatures you control get plus one, plus one, other white creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So those four, four golems that were red and white, the token golems, those are six sixes if this is on the battlefield. Six, six token creatures that you're just automatically creating every time you cast a multicolored creature spell. Or is it creature? I feel like I'm getting it wrong now. Oh, just multicolored spell. It doesn't even have to be a creature. Oh boy. And whenever you play a red spell, it deals three damage to target player. So that's just a whole bunch of extra damage to players. And you can gain three life every time you cast a white. Remember, if it's red and white, or even red, white, and green, you're gonna uh, activate both of those, right? They're not exclusive. You don't have to choose or anything. You can gain three life and do deal three damage to a target opponent every time you cast a red or red and white spell. Um, just so much work it's doing. Blood Braid Elf. This is a weirder one, but okay. Uh, two red green. So this is our Gruel one here. She has Cascade. Once again, Haste and Cascade. The Haste and Cascade is an important combination in this deck. 
What you want to do is just keep recasting her and fetching out things. We've got a whole bunch of creatures that are like CMC 3 or lower. So every time you cast her, she's going to like, you're going to go through the deck and uh, find something that's the next thing that's a lower CMC. So 3 or lower and uh, throw it straight into the battlefield. And uh, she has haste, so attack with her immediately. Hopefully someone takes her out, sends her to the graveyard, which will put her back into your hand and you'll do it again. And you'll just keep doing that over and over and over. Um, oy, it's going to be a lot of extra value you're getting for free out of that four. Is going to probably be like six or seven casting value that you're getting for that four casting cost. Uh, Fay Burrow Elder. One and uh, Selesnya, so green white. So this has vigilance and it gets plus one plus one for each color among permanents you control. Remember, your commander is three colors. So if your commander's out and you cast this, it's a three three immediately. And you can tap him for each color among permanents you control, add one mana of that color. So if your commander's out, also, this is going to tap for all three colors. A mana dork that does three and three different colors and all the colors you need. Pretty much you're set for casting anything you want, right? Um, really just awesome card. Hajar, Loyal Bodyguard. So this is getting into one of the sub themes here. For a red and a green, again, that's a two casting cost. So that like your Bloodbraid Elf can cast this for free. Every time you cast this, you might be pulling Hajar out. Sacrifice Hajar. Uh, legendary creatures you control get plus one and gain indestructible until end of turn. Indestructible whenever you want and remember as soon as you sacrifice them at the end of the turn going straight back to your hand again so you can play them again and basically every round all of your indestructible creatures are going to have indestructible or sorry all of your legendary creatures are going to have indestructible. Just you can use this counter board wipes, you can use this for attacks, you can whatever you want. It's uh, really amazing. Uh, especially the sack and cycle. Uh, oh boy. Okay, part two, the plan. Here we got the deck objectives and kind of how we win, right? So first of all, ramp, then token creation. That's a big part of this. More creatures getting more and more creatures onto the battlefield so they keep going back to your hand if they get put out and then win cons ramp okay so we got savala eagle or eager eager trailblazer eagle uh eager trailblazer not an eagle she's an elf anyway uh so choose a color add one man of the color for each different power among creatures you control so we're going to have a nice assortment of power but also, we got plus one, plus one counters, right? So those plus one, plus one counters are going to add even more variety. So you can potentially make a pretty good amount of one color of mana just by tapping her. Uh, Trail Tracker Scout. Okay, this is one of the very few cards I put in this deck that is not multicolored. Just because this is like the best green card, I think. Um, this is definitely on my list of pre-con upgrades. For one or green, one, three, add one mana of any color by tapping. And whenever you expend eight, again, let's just use eight mana, return up to one target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Okay, our, our uh, creatures do this if they get killed, but there's other ways, right? Even if they, uh, if they get countered. And we got anti-counter things, but it still might happen if they get taken out when your commander's not on the battlefield or if it's a enchantment if it's an, an artifact these things we're going to be able to get back anyway which is very much not something we want to be lacking on chromatic lantern the mana fixing is a really big deal because everything is like it's all about multicolored creatures so we need so much mana fixing and yeah Lands you control have, add one mana of any color. So this just makes everything into like, uh, just an automatic any color you want land. Um, it's uh, pretty amazing. 
Fay Burrow Elder. Well, this one we already talked about. So this can, again, as long as you've got the colors of different permanents, this will tap for all the colors you need. Karamitra, God of Harvest. Again, so three and Selesnia, so green white. For six, seven, indestructible, not too shabby. As long as her, your devotion to green and white is less than seven, Karamitra isn't a creature. So if you have less than seven pips, again, little symbols, green and white ones on the battlefield, she's just an enchantment, not even a creature. So yeah, can't attack, but can't be targeted by all kinds of things anyway. Uh, whenever you cast a creature spell, you may search your library for a forest or a plains card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. So this is going to just keep pulling lands out of your... Again, we have 10, or we have 5 forests, 5 plains. So that's 10 things. You, If you cast 10 creatures while she's on the battlefield, you're ramping 10 land. Aye, 10 is a lot of ramp. Oh boy. Token creation. Okay, uh, the general we already talked about, so that's going to be a lot. Rabble rousing. Um, this, again, whenever you attack with one or more creatures, create that many 1-1 one, one green and white creature citizen tokens. Then if you control 10 or more creatures, you may play the exiled card without paying its mana cost. It has highway 5. So when you cast this, you look at the top 5 cards and choose one. Basically, you put one under there, and as soon as you have... 10 or more creatures, you're going to automatically cast that for free. Oh boy. You're going to be able to find something out of 5 cards, that's for sure. Uh, and uh, yeah, these green and white tokens, these are amazing because we do have an anthem that's going to give them potentially plus 2. So they're going to be 3-3s three that are just going to like pop up every time you attack. It's going to make more and more and more. Keep in mind, we actually want to keep attacking because that's going to send things to our graveyard, which will send them back to our hand, which will let us play them again. So it's kind of like a win-win. If they block um, and take your stuff out, great. If they don't, great. I'm happy either way. Dr. John Seward. Okay, so one and Selesnia, so green-white. He has training, and whenever a creature, you cast a creature spell, create a 1-1 one, one green and white human creature token with training. Again, training just means if you, ca if you cast a spell that has, or if you cast a creature that has higher attack or, def or toughness, they get a plus one, plus one counter. So you're going to keep casting things over and over, and these are just going to keep getting bigger, 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 bigger. Um, also, our plus one, plus one theme... I actually don't have him listed on that. There's a whole lot for that as well. So yeah. Balin, the Haymaker. This is a new one. Uh, I do love having rabbits and stuff in there. Tap two on tap tokens you control. Add one mana of any color. Again, do this when it's like about to be your turn. The last player's end step is coming up. Just tap everything and you can cast like crazy. And uh, yeah. We do have ways to do that. Tap three on tap tokens you control, draw a card. So you could just draw a whole bunch of cards if you want to. Tap four on tap tokens you control, put three plus one plus one counters on Balin. The Haymaker, it gains trample until end of turn. So there's a potential uh, win con there as well. This is probably the best one though. Uh, Quintorius, Field Historian. Three, uh, Boros, Red White. For an Elephant, Cleric. So we got bunnies and elephants in here. Spirits you control get plus one plus zero. Whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, create a three, two, red and white spirit token. Red and white, Balefire Liege likes that, right? So these are gonna be five fours or six fours because of his bonus. And um, holy cow, yeah. Every time a creature leaves your graveyard, he automatically just creates one. Again, your any multicolored creatures you have that die go to your graveyard and at the end of turn they go back to your hand so this is going to create a whole bunch of uh, tokens for absolutely nothing this is not going to cost you mana this doesn't you don't have to do a bunch of things you got to remember the trigger that's it when when you're taking stuff out of your graveyard be like oh yeah and by the way here's a bunch of token uh here's a whole massive you know like 
I guess four twos, unless the Balefire leaves out, then there are six four tokens that it's just like, oh boy, that's, that's been more creatures. So this deck is definitely not just about like keeping the creatures alive, but also keep casting, keep getting things out of your, out of your uh, deck or your library, I should say. But anyway, okay, Brazen Upstart for Naya Vigilance. Again, three CMC. When he, he and when it dies, look at the top five cards of your library. You may re reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on your bottom of your library in a random order. So this is going to like you're going to hopefully keep just getting him, throwing him at people, and then yeah, he's going to die. And as soon as he dies, you get to look at the top five cards and take a creature and put it into your hand, and then put the rest on the bottom of your library, and hopefully. He'll go straight back to your hand and then cast him again, do it again, over and over and over. Just keep doing it, right? You're gonna keep just taking taking creatures so fast. Rocco, Cabaretti, Caterer. This is one that usually doesn't work well with re recursion, just because like, if you recur it straight to the, from the graveyard to the battlefield, X would be zero, okay? So anyway, I should explain what he does first. Again, so he's X and, uh, uh, red, green, white for 3-1. When he enters the battlefield, if you cast it, you may search your library for a creature card with benefit value X or less, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Just tutor any creature you want straight to the battlefield. Um, and then, yeah, he's hopefully, you just throw him, throw him at someone, he's gonna go to the graveyard, go back to your hand, cast him again, do it again, right? So whatever win con you want to go with, whatever fits into what you have on the uh, onto the board, you're just gonna be able to like, hey, I got just the thing I need right now, always. Again, Dragon Arch. We already talked about Dragon Arch, but yeah, just putting straight, things straight into the battlefield. With the exception of Rocco, I guess Rocco is like the one in this deck that that wouldn't be good for, but usually. One thing you need to worry about is like your hand getting too full and discarding. This is going to make sure you're going to keep throwing things back into the battlefield or into the battlefield. And uh, yeah, just keep that value train going. Evolutionary Leap. We talked about this one as well. Getting the creature to hand and sacrificing anytime you want. It is a just scary good combo. Keep in mind you can just sack tokens as well. If you just want to get more creatures to hand, Sacrifice tokens, not a big deal. Cabaretti Ascendancy. Once again, Naya, so red, white, uh, green. At the beginning of your upkeep, so the start of your turn, look at the top card of your library. If it's a creature or planeswalker card, you may reveal it, put it into your hand. If you don't, put the card, you may put it onto the bottom of your deck. So this is kind of like a scry. It's like if it's a creature or planeswalker, you get to draw. Otherwise, you can put it to the bottom of your deck as something you don't really want right now. That kind of sorting is super strong, actually. Like, if you need a land, you can still leave it at the top and get the land. If uh, you don't need whatever it is on top, you can uh, hopefully draw something else that's more useful. Win con number one. Commander damage. Always commander damage first. So, again, Rien, obviously, is going to be our commander, so commander damage. Uh, Helena and Elena, partners. First strike reach. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put X plus one plus one counters on another target creature where X is the Helena and Elena's power. That creature gains haste until end of turn. So you can just keep throwing these plus one. Every combat you're gonna be able to like, oh, here's a whole bunch of plus one plus one counters. And we also have things like Lenore that can put a plus one plus one counter at the beginning of combat on something. So you're gonna have so many ways to like, just keep throwing plus one plus one counters on your commander that um keep in mind it's 21 so starting with 521 is still quite a long way away but legion leadership is going to make that up until end of turn double target creatures power and it gains first strike so again she's already flying so she already has evasion and five you gotta basically get six plus one plus one counters on her which is not super hard. We've got ways to like double the amount of plus one plus one counters. We've got ways to like keep throwing plus one plus one counters on. Uh, even Helena and Lena 
uh, if you have Riot going, when that comes into the battlefield, it's going to be a 3-4 three, three, immediately, right? So that's every combat, you're putting 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters. The best thing you could probably do is just like... Oh, wait. Oh, it is another creature. I was going to say, Halana and Alenda should target itself. But no, nope, can't do that. Uh, okay. Anyway, that's too bad. Um, but still, you've got so many ways to boost up. You know, pl add plus one, plus one counters. Just throw it on Helena and Elena. Within two turns, it'll be within, you know, with a uh, pretty huge to the point where you can just like probably put a huge number of plus one, plus one counters in your commander and start one shotting people pretty quick. Okay, token combat, win con two, starting with Naya Charm. This is like the meanest charm. I have lost, lost to this on more than one occasion. My one of my students has a Naya deck and uh, would just wreck me with it constantly. Okay, so for again Naya, again red, green, white. Naya Charm deals three damage to target creature. Okay, return target card from your graveyard to the owner's hand. The nice thing about that is that it does say card, right? Not permanent, not creature, not whatever. It's just card. So if you're going to do this, target like an instant or a sorcery because we have other ways of getting almost everything else out. Um, or tap target, uh, tap all target creatures, target player controls. That's your win con, right? You're just going to tap down their board. The nice thing about tapping all their creatures, not only they can they not block you, they can't block anyone else either. So any player that goes before them is going to be able to like just take free shots at them probably taking them out of the game. Again, Rabble Rousing we already talked about, getting all your extra tokens down so that they can just swarm them. And uh, Wilt Leaf Liege. Again, that plus one, plus one, green plus one, plus one, white anthem. That stacks for those. And we've got the other ones with training as well, which are gonna hopefully end up being even bigger than one ones. So yeah. You can very likely end up with like just a massive amount of like four fours or even bigger tokens that are just gonna like be pretty much unstoppable, especially if they can't block. Combat, okay. This is just regular old combat. So we've got glory for three white white. This is a three three flyer and you want this in the graveyard. This is a monocolored, I think this is the other monocolored creature. There's only two. This one you want in the graveyard. When it's in the graveyard, pay two and a white to give all of your creatures protection from any color. And you can activate this multiple times, right? So even if someone has two different colors of creatures, you think they can block, just pay six mana instead and then give all your creatures protection from both colors and then uh, win the game. Yeah. Heavy the All Father. So this is three. Uh, red, green, white. He's very key in our legendary sub theme. Um, he has indestructible as long as there are four or more historic cards in your graveyard. Artifacts, legendaries, and sagas are historic. Again, your legendary creatures are probably gonna end up just going back to your hand or being indestructible. So, get actually giving him indestructible is a little more difficult than I'd like it to be in this deck. But we've got other things. Sage Project. Whenever Javi or another legendary creature you control dies, return a target legendary creature with lesser pow mana value from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So anytime a legendary creature dies, you can find a cheaper one in your, or lower CMC I should say, one in your graveyard, put it straight back in the battlefield tapped, and the end of the turn, that legendary creature goes back to your hand and you can just cast it again. So this is like doubling up on your kind of graveyard recursion. Um, if they do manage to get your commander out, you are going to end up with a whole bunch of things in the graveyard. So this is something that's going to help you kind of get all of your legendary sub theme going again and rebuild very quickly. If someone has a ward wipe and manages to actually get your commander off the battlefield, this is going to like kind of keep it even safer. Anyway. Strength of the Harvest. Again, this is our two-faced card. The other side being the land. Uh, the, the dual land, I should say. For two and white or green. 
Enchant creature, it's an aura. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each creature and or enchantment you control. You're going to be making so many tokens that whatever this goes on is going to be massive. Okay, so yeah, throw this on Javi and uh, give him protection from whatever color and he can just like... Do a really huge amount of damage is what I'm going to say. I don't know if it's going to one shot, but it's going to be uh, maybe two shot. Yeah. One sided combat. Okay, so we also got our sack effects here. Dauntless Escort for one green white. You can sacrifice him with no mana cost or tapping or anything like that. Creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. All of your creatures. Uh, what was it before? I've already spaced on the name, but anyway, the bodyguard one that gives indestructible creatures, uh, or sorry, legendary creatures indestructible, this gives everything indestructible. Doesn't care what the creature is, it's indestructible now. And then use something like, so you cast him, and then on the following turn, Sacrifice him, give all of your stuff indestructible, and then depopulate. Each player who controls a multicolored creature draws a card, then destroy all creatures. Your creatures are indestructible, so you can't destroy them. But you can draw a card. Part 3, Combos and Tactics. Okay, so we're going to look at Combos, Tactics, also kind of our sub-themes is what I look over here. Sack and Sack and Sack. Sacrifice some something. Talked about Dauntless Escort already. Again, heal, sacrifice, make everything indestructible, and then just go straight back to your hand again. Hajar Loyal Bodyguard. There you go, Hajar. That's his name. For only two mana. He does only make legendary creatures indestructible, but also gives them plus one damage, which is kind of nice. Safi Eric's Daughter. This is a really fun one. You can kind of abuse. Um, sacrifice Sac Safi Eric's Daughter. When target creature is put into your graveyard this turn, return that to the battlefield. So your commander. This is ideal for your commander. Someone uses, you know, someone destroys your commander. No problem. Sacrifice Safi. Your commander's going to go to the graveyard. Go straight back to the battlefield, and at the end of turn, Safi goes back to your hand because your commander is on the battlefield. Ah, mean. Spark Trooper. Okay, this is four mana for a six one. Once again, if you've got Balefire Liege, that's an eight three. Has Trample, Lifelink, and Haste. So every time you cast him, you're just throwing him straight at someone, and you're gonna gain life and probably do damage with Trample. And at the beginning of your end, each end step, sacrifice Spark Trooper. So you do have to sacrifice him at the, every end step, which is great, because he's going to go straight back to your hand. Then you're going to cast him again and just do it all over again, right? Yeah, especially if you have Riot or something, you can just th start putting those plus one, plus one counters on him. Helena and Elena is in, on the battlefield. Great. Throw more plus one, plus one counters on him. And uh, hey, just keep gaining life and just doing loads of damage and you kind of don't have to worry about what happens. Quasali Pride Mage. Uh, I don't know how to say Quasali. I feel like that, that I'm doing it wrong, but anyway. For a green and a white, only two to cast and pay one, you can sacrifice him to destroy target artifact or enchantment. Again, we've got the Hex, uh, Hex, Hex Catcher. I can't remember any of their names every time, but anyway. We've got the anti, uh, anti enchantment. So, our enchantment removal guy, we've already got that, but this can do artifact or enchantment, right? So, this is more flexible. It does cost one mana, but I guess it costs two extra mana overall, but you don't have to tap him or anything either. So, summoning sickness does not matter, right? You can cast him, do this, send the graveyard, straight back to your hand, do it again next turn, just over and over and over. No problem. Okay, plus one, plus one counter sub theme now. Rhythm of the Wild. So Riot is very, very big in this. Creature spells you control can't be countered. Non-token creatures you control have Riot. So again, one uh, red-green. I should actually say it's an enchantment as well. And yeah, 
your non-token things. Unfortunately, it does specify non-token. Um, so yeah, that is just gonna give everything haste or a plus one, plus one counter, whatever you want. Oh boy, that's gonna do some work. Lenore, Autumn Sovereign for a two, green, white, a zero, four. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus one, plus one counter up to one target creature you control. Then if you control three or more creatures with different powers, you probably will draw a card. Again, she's gonna keep, we wanna have different powers of things, not only to create more mana, but also to keep drawing extra cards even. Uh, very mean little combo. Helena and Elena, we already talked about. Again, put your plus one, plus one on Helena and Elena. Use right, plus one, plus one on Helena and Elena. And then Lenore is gonna put another plus one, plus one. And that's probably gonna make sure you have like different values as well, which is gonna be just so mean. Aragorn, Hornburg hero. So attacking creatures you control have first strike and renown one. First strike, you're just like taking things out it's nice if they go back to go to the graveyard so you can recast them. It's even nicer if you're just taking out everyone else's board, right? Renown 1. So when the creature with Renown 1 does co deals combat damage to a player, if it isn't Renown, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it. So there's another source of plus 1, plus 1 counters. And whenever a Renown creature you control deals combat damage to a player, double the number of plus 1, plus 1 counters on it. So again, Helena, Lena, him, and your commander, if they're all in the battlefield, that's your commander damage, almost sorted right there, right? If you can get one attack through with your commander, you probably are gonna have that stack of plus one, plus one counters. You need to just start one-shotting very quickly, or at least on the next turn. Verdant Confluence. I love this card so much. Four green, green, so it's pricey, but choose three. You may choose the same mode more than once. Put two plus one, plus one counters on target creature. So you can put up to six plus one plus one counters on a creature. Um, yeah, that gets to be commander damage pretty quick. Anyway, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Once again, target permanent card. So you can't, it, you're not really worried about creatures, but your artifacts, your uh, enchantments, really anything else you need to get back to your hand, uh, this can do it. Search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle. Or ramp. You can ramp three things for six mana. That's two per, right? They come in tap, sure, but that's a... Uh, especially the fact that you can go get any kind of basic land you want. Three of anything, or you, you could just mix and match them however you want. This is just such a mean card in this deck. Anthems. Okay, so we've got Balefire Liege we talked about. Red and white creatures get plus one, plus one. Or if they're red and white, they get plus two, plus two. Uh, Wilt Leaf Liege. Green creatures get plus one, plus one. Other white creatures get plus one, plus one. Once again, if they're green and white, plus two, plus two. Also, if something makes you discard this, you can just put it in the battlefield instead. So, yeah. Discard? No worries. Sigarda Font of Blessings. Two white green for a 4-4 four, four flyer. Flyers, nice. Other permanents you control have hex proof. Permanents. Permanents have hex proof, right? It doesn't say creatures, it says permanents. Oh boy. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast angel and human spells from the top of your library. There's actually a good number of humans. This is by no means a human kindred deck, but there's a lot of humans. So you're probably going to be able to take advantage of that. You really want it for the hex proof, though. Cancel counters. Okay, so we got guttural response. We want to shut down counters as much as we can. Even if you shut down one or two of them, someone's probably going to start being like, oh, they planned for this. Maybe I should just not, you know, waste my counters on this person anymore. Guttural response for one, right? A green or a red? Counter target blue instant spell. Most counters are going to be those blue counter spells, you know? That's just going to like, okay, goodbye. You're out of the game. Um, shutting even one down, I think it's going to make people go, oh, maybe I should not do that again. 
Kudzil Malamet Exemplar. So this is our uh, green white, one green white. Your opponents can't cast spells during your turn. They can't use counter spells if they can't use spells, right? And you can also draw cards anytime. Something with uh, power greater than its base power deals combat damage to a player. The, this synergizes automatically with our plus one, plus one counters, right? That's uh, anything with plus one, plus one counter, if it deals damage to a player, is doing more damage than its uh, base power. Um, so you're just drawing cards as well. And again, Rhythm of the Wild. We already talked about for the riot, but creatures, creature spells can't be countered. Sorry, sp creature spells you control can't be countered. Everyone else's can be. Legendary sub theme now. Loyal bodyguard we talked about already. Good old Hajar. Relic of legends. This is huge because you could just, I believe there are 17 legendary creatures. So if you even have a few of them on the battlefield, you can tap them. Again, sorry, first of all, it's three mana for an artifact. Tap to add one mana of any color, and you can tap legendary creatures for one mana. So your your legendary creatures, you can tap them all and just cast, right? Cast whatever you want, and uh, basically they're all mana dorks now. A win, fearless knight. So two red, white for a three, four with haste. When she enters the battlefield. Exile target creature and opponent controls with greater power. Hopefully the commander. Legendary creatures you control gain protection from each of that creature's colors until end of turn. So if you exile their commander, all of your legendary creatures have protection from their deck. Unless they have like colorless artifact creatures, that's about all they can do to block you. If they've got colorless, they can still block. Anything that is in their commander's color, if you exile their commander, is just gonna like you. You can just ignore it. The, they can't block you. They can't do anything. And yeah, she has haste, so she could just so, go right into the battle as well. Heavy the All Father. We talked about him already, but really he's in for a second ability in this deck. Uh, if you do manage to get some uh, le four legendaries into your graveyard then um or legendaries and or artifacts we don't have sagas so then he's going to be indestructible as well so yeah yoy not bad well, keep in mind if you have a legendary that can sacrifice like hajar you can uh, potentially use that to give him uh at least temporary indestructible hajar will go back to your hand at the beginning of the next end step but he will be, until until Hajar goes back to your hand, he's indestructible for as long as Hajar will be in there. Or the, the legendary, four legendaries are in there. Grand Warlord Rada. This actually doesn't care much about legendary, but it's great for ramp. Okay, four, uh, two, red, green, for, with haste for a three, four. Whenever one or more creatures you control attack, add that much mana in any combination red or green until end of turn. You don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. So you're just you're gonna have your combat. You're gonna attack with like as much as possible. If you got rabble rousing, you're creating a whole bunch of extra tokens. And then yeah, whenever your creatures attack, however many attack, you make that much mana and you just cast more spells. You're getting more, hopefully, legendaries down. Um, yeah. Gets really out of control. Flash and legendary. Okay, I should actually have included uh, Balin in this for um, for his, yeah, tapping tokens to make mana. But anyway, so we've got Relic of Legends. Again, tap one uh, legendary, great. Or legendary creature, right? Yeah, it is legendary creature make one mana. So they're all mana drops that can produce anything. And with Vivian on the battlefield, all of your creature spells have flash. So you could just flash in everything. You know, if someone else's, the previous player's end step, just tap all your legendary creatures. They're going to untap right away and cast as much as you can. Um, this is going to probably just, you know, flood the board. 
Anyway, this has been Rien, Angel of Rebirth, one more time. Thanks, and take it easy. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, this is Joe from Nerd in Korea. Hello, hello. Kirby's here, too. Uh, my son is here because it's Sunday, hello. so thank you, Mason. Hello. So uh, hopefully he uh, lets me record. Um... I'm not sure how well this is going to go without getting it's, attacked by all the Kirby's. Kirby is very powerful. Is yes, it, I agree. It, it, anyway, all right, so we are doing a Rien Angel of Rebirth one more time deck this time. Um, I really like this commander. I think it's a lot of fun, but let's get into it. Oops. Oh, good. Okay, I'm going to have to just stop. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, I'm hello. Me to Kirby Maria Yoda. Okay, Mason, I got to record, buddy. Hello, hello. I'm Mr. Kirby. Yes, it's Kirby, Mason. Thank you. Hello, hello. I'm Mr. Kirby. I'm Kirby. Yes, it's another Kirby. He's got three Kirby's. One more. Yeah, I know. Okay, that was only two. Right, one more. Oh, okay. So, it is it's Kirby Yeah, there's the third Kirby. That's fun. Okay, now it's all three Kirby's. There you go. There's all three of them. <laughs> you okay? I'm okay, yeah. <clears throat> okay, buddy. Alright. So? So. I'm gonna do you. I guess I'm done. I don't know if they understand what Aggie Seminda means. Um, I'm pretty sure they don't speak Korean. Okay, okay, buddy. <laughs> 